morning again so we guys are here at the citadel now and we'll take a walk through and see how the citadel is and we have Abraham with us he will explain all about the citadel so this is the entrance on the outside here there you go inside from there look at this nice view nice weather too so this is the ticket counter so that is the 12th century when it was built by Saladin and again the main reason to build this citadel or fortress is to protect the city of Cairo against the invasion of the crusaders when they came here to Jerusalem and to the Arab world mm. so Saladin built the citadel and the citadel became the residence of the king of Egypt king of Egypt yes so the king of Egypt used to live here in this place okay. especially in this palace this is so, an old who, who palace who was the king of Egypt? And Saladin, Saladin. Saladin. And all other kings who ruled <coughs> after him they were ruling from here, from oh, the citadel. So Saladin this, was first? Yes, was the first, first to build the citadel. And also the palace was built here is what we call it Al Jauhara. Al Jauhara. You know what is Al Jauhara? Yeah. It's like the jewelry or the gem ah. palace. This yeah. is how they call it. Right now this palace is under restoration. It's not in a good condition at all. Mm. But they are restoring it to make it as good as it used to be mm. uh, when it was built. So from this palace, Egypt was ruled for more than 500 years. Mm. The citadel used to be the residence of the king of Egypt. Muhammad Ali was the first one. He decided to build, to build other palaces outside the citadel. So he ruled Egypt from other palaces he built later outside the city. Mm. The reason to build the citadel, like we said, is to protect the city of Cairo and also to be the largest military base we have in the city. Yeah. Saladin was able to stop the invasion of the Crusaders mm. by using what we call them Mamluks. Mamluks. Yes, Mamluks. This is a very important era in history of Egypt. When Saladin and the other kings who ruled after him, they decided to use the Mamluks in their fight with what the Crusaders. What is Mamluk? What is Mamluk? When I... Um, so the verb is Yamluk. Yamluk. Yeah. We so Yamluk... We thing for Yamluk in Hindi. What is the meaning it's, of this? Um, God so of Yam death. means... Yam means God of death. God of death. And Yamluk <laughs> means the place where... Uh, when you die and God Yam takes you, he mm -hmm. keeps you there. That okay. is Yam Luk. Yeah. So Yam Luk for us means you own something. Uh. You possess something. Uh. So when you own something, it's a Mamluk. So I own this bag, so uh. this bag is Mamluk to me. Mamluk. Okay. So Mamluk means like the servants mm. or the slaves. slaves. They right. were bought by the Saladin. Yeah. And Saladin, his name, his name is Saladin al Ayubi. So we call him and his family the Ayyubid era when they ruled Egypt. So they used the Mamluks and they used to go to the slave markets and that was something very popular all over the world to buy the young kids, bring them to Egypt and they would be raised up here inside the citadel when it used to be the largest military base in the city. Okay. They were trained to be the best soldiers ever. Really? Yes. Okay. This is all what we need for a new to get the best training here since you are very young yeah. so you raise up and you would be the best soldier ever oh. this is one of the main reasons that Saladin and his family they were able to stop the invasion of the crusaders from Europe to Jerusalem by using the power of Mamluks mm. Saladin family was ended and then Egypt and all this area was facing another danger was coming from Asia Asia. What we call them? The Mughals. Mughals. Yes. yes. Oh, so yeah. Ganges Khan, <laughs> uh. they came to this area and it, it was a disaster, especially in Baghdad. Uh. In Baghdad, they killed the thousands of people and they destroyed Baghdad and thousands of people were killed. Mm. Thousands of books from the library of Baghdad were thrown in the river. Yeah. Some sayings describe this situation that the color of the water become, became very blue because of the ink that came out from the books, books. that all the, the uh, Mughals just throw it in the river. Oh. Thousands of people were killed and slaughtered there in uh, Baghdad. Mm. The next 
target mm-hmm. after Baghdad was Egypt. Egypt. Mm-hmm. Yes, and Egypt was facing a chaotic situation. Mm-hmm. That was the end of the Ayyubid era and the mm-hmm. Saladin's family. Mm-hmm. Egypt had no king during this era. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And the, and the Mughals messengers came to the city. He wants the king or who, who, who's ever in charge of Egypt is to open the gates of the city and to surrender to the Mughals. Mughals. So one of the Mamluks, his name was Saifuddin. He decided to be in charge of the country and to unite all the Mamluks. Because Mamluks used to have like troops. They used to have to live in troops and the king surrounded themselves by other Mamluks. They got all the authority and Okay, so now we are entering the city there. Ibrahim, I'll tell you one joke. Okay, so here it is. Wow. Wow, what an architecture. Wow. So this is the citadel. And what an architecture. Just look at it. Very Turkish. Yes, of course, because it was made at a time when the Turkish were in Egypt. The alabaster mosque of Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. He took 18 years to build this mosque, and the mosque is one of the fanciest mosques we have. And it was built on the same Ottoman design. So the mosque comes with the central dome in the middle, and the semi domes, and the pointed minarets. So this is the exact the same design of Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque in yeah. Istanbul. Yeah, in Blue Mosque, uh, the roof is. This is where we have this water fountain. So the water fountain is where people used to make wazu and when they are finished they go inside the mosque to start the prayer. So this is the regular design of the Ottoman mosques. It comes in two parts, the open courtyard with the water fountain and the other covered the part where they make the actual prayer. Again the mosque is well known as the Alabaster Mosque because you can see the walls, the ground, and also all the columns, it's even the water fountain, it's all, it's all alabaster, yeah. Marble stone. Something very funny about the mosque of Muhammad Ali, that Muhammad Ali wanted something unique and special in his mosque. That's why the king of France, his name was Louis Philippe, decided to give something special to Muhammad Ali to put it in his mosque. What did he give him? He gave him what we call it the clock tower. Oh. This is a special tower with a clock. Muhammad Ali put it in his mosque and it was given to him by the king of France. The funny thing is that this clock tower worked for only a couple of weeks and that's it. <laughs> it didn't work for more. Muhammad Ali decided to give something from Egypt to the king of France. He decided to give him an obelisk from the famous Luxor temple which is the very well-known obelisk in Paris, in Concord, well-known as the Egyptian obelisk. Mm. So they took this one, they gave us the clock tower, and that wasn't the best exchange for Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> because their clock didn't work oh. for a long time. Yeah. So make sure you don't get... Look at how beautiful this is. Wow. Beautiful. We make the actual prayer. The Mosque of Muhammad Ali is the most beautiful we have. All the beautiful decoration of the ceiling of the mosque makes it one of the wow. most beautiful of the unique mosques in Egypt. This is very much like as close to Hagia Sophia it can get. Yes. So look at this mosque. This is the prayer room, this is where they do the prayer and this is so similar to Hagia Sophia in Turkey. Wow. Look at this, look at the design. And they're still trying to restore things. So yeah, look at this, look at this.
Now let's take a look at the panoramic view.